connect that now to the uh, story I was telling you last time about the monetary transmission mechanism, because that's what I was telling you last time. Okay, Remember, there were three diagrams. There was one, we started with the securities market, the dealer market for bonds, then we moved to the, to the term funding rate, okay? and then we moved to the Fed funds market. Okay? Now I'm just going to go in the reverse direction, okay? because the Fed funds market is here. Okay? Term funding okay, is three months, and then the bond market is out here. Okay? These, are the three, these are the three sort of points of reference that I introduced last time. Let me just refresh your memory about what those things look like. Okay. Um, so we will start here on the left with the uh, Fed funds market. And you'll remember that we were talking about uh, a kind of outside spread that was set by the central bank, that we have the interest on excess reserves and the discount rate as the outside spread, and that there is a upward sloping uh, sort of bid-ask kind of line here. Um, and uh, so this is an interest rate here, but it's an overnight interest rate, let's say, overnight interest rate. Um, I, I notice in my notes that I, I put on the horizontal axis here uh, liquidity risk um, when, I, when I taught this on Monday. Um, and, uh, and I put on the hor horizontal axis for the term also liquidity risk. OK, so let's, let's have two different terms so that we don't confuse ourselves. Let's call this settlement risk here because we introduced the Fed funds market when we were talking about the payment system and talked about how this allowed, allowed people to put off till tomorrow, move, you know, borrow the reserves they need to clear their payments now and put off payment till, till tomorrow. So, so this is sort of all about settlement risk in, in overnight and short, short, short term here. Um, and then we had a second tier. Okay where we were talking about liquidity risk and uh, proper, which is the risk involved in borrowing short and lending long, or borrowing overnight and lending for three months, something like that. That was what we had, had in mind. Um, and again, we had upward sloping, and this was a term interest rate here, not overnight. Okay. And then we had a third diagram that was about the bond market. And here we had an asset price, the price of bonds. Um, and so we had a downward sloping curve. And here, this was, uh, sometimes I put, I put inventories on here. So this is a long position in bonds. Um, but the inventories, the important thing about the inventories is that this is exposure to a certain kind of risk. So this is price risk. Okay. When I developed this, we started with this because this is the trainer model. Okay, that you've seen now twice. Okay, and and then I I said, well, let's think, use that same thing to talk about this, and then let's use that same thing to talk about this. Okay, what I'm what I'm we're, when we talk about the transmission mechanism for monetary policy, we're going the other way. Okay, we're saying that the Fed is fixing here a target Fed funds rate. And it's trading in the market, and I showed you last time how it's doing that. It's doing temporary open market operations um, in order to make that effective. Okay. That trading leads to uh, a, a, a level of settlement risk in the, in the economy here, okay. which is the discipline element because I'm showing it to, to the right here, OK? Um, and, uh, and, and or we saw now there's so many excess reserves, it's smack up against, against the left. So that was total elasticity here. So it's sort of discipline on this side, elasticity the more you go in this direction. So 
This diagram is meant to help you think about the Fed in choosing its Fed funds target, is trying to choose how much, elast how, how much it wants to lean toward making things a little more elastic, how much it wants to lean toward making things a little more disciplined, and that's a policy choice. That's a policy choice. The same interest rate is going to be, is going to be elast cause elasticity in some circumstances and, in, and, in, and, in, and discipline in other circumstances. So this is very much responding to the conditions of the market, um, but this is a way of understanding what the Fed is doing when it's picking a, a Fed funds rate um, that is connected to our understanding of the microstructure of the market and isn't just you know, an algebraic equation there that doesn't seem to really connect to the reality of, of institutions. This then gets transmitted, okay, because remember here we had, uh, we had to, there's, a, there's a certain amount of, of liquidity risk here um, to a term rate, to a three month rate or something, which is the spread between the three month rate and the Fed funds rate, okay, and it gets transmitted also to a certain amount of price risk. Uh, here, inventories, I'm showing long bond holdings because the dealers tend to hold, hold long bonds. And so the argument I would, I would make here, so let's just do a little spread around that, okay, is that the, uh, if the Fed wants to move the Fed funds rate around, what it does is it shifts the target, and that also shifts the discount rate because that's a spread above, and it's going to shift this. So it's moving all of this. That makes, if it, if it raises the Fed funds rate, that narrows the, 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 the gap between Fed funds and the term rate, which the dealers aren't happy with, okay, so they raise their, their term interest rate, so that pushes upward pressure on the term interest rate. That makes funding more expensive, so, so bond, bond dealers here don't want to quite hold as large inventories, and so that puts downward pressure on bond prices. So the story I'm telling here is about a transmission mechanism from the overnight Fed funds rate to the term interest rate to asset prices, okay? And those asset prices then influence the price of loans uh, because mortgage-backed securities are in fact bonds uh, and, and so forth. And so the transmission to the, to the real economy comes through the price of money here, okay, and, and, and the price of capital uh, here, the money market and, and the capital market here. This, I think, is a clear, clean story about monetary transmission that doesn't involve talking about institutions that no longer exist, okay? Like banks that are making multiples of their, of their reserves, you know, the, the money multiplier idea, stuff like this. This stuff just does not connect up with the reality in modern, in modern financial markets. And so, but, and so many people in finance even say, they, because I, as I told you, in finance theory and asset pricing theory, often abstract from liquidity in the first place, and they just say, well, so there should be no monetary theory, okay? And I'm saying, there should be monetary theory. It just should be focusing on how the money market works, okay? Not, not on a uh, bank lending channel or something like that, okay? That, that this, this channel works instantaneously, you know, because when you, it doesn't re require anyone to expand lending or anything, because it's arbitrage relationships in securities markets, okay? So these, these things move, uh, you, you move, you move this, you're gonna move the term interest rate, you're gonna move the, this price. You may not move it exactly the way you want, because there's a market out there that's watching what you're doing and also anticipating what comes next and all of that, okay? But, but this is a transmission mechanism that I think uh, you can hang your hat on for the modern economy in which there is uh, deregulated banking and, 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 and so forth. So monetary policy does matter, okay, in, 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 in the modern world, um, despite all that deregulation. I'm not gonna tell you what monetary policy should be doing, you know, what we should be doing with this, because I don't really know. This is what we have to rethink. You know, we, the whole profession walked down this road, and it's not clear that this is the right way to think about what the Fed should be doing anymore, okay? But uh, we're still using that because it's what we have, okay? And uh, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm emphasizing in this class is let's just understand when we talk about the Fed changing the Fed funds rate, what are we imagining, how are we imagining that is gonna influence the real economy or the price level or something? And, and this is the first step here that I wanna get you to, to see. The transition, tra transmission from the Fed funds market to the term interest rate 
to asset prices.